Today the adventure takes us to the Mountain State, West Virginia. We'll find some awesome free camping near Charleston, the state capital. We'll visit the new River Gorge, Babcock State Park, Hawks Nest State Park, and Kanoa Falls in Glen Ferris, among other things. I'm riding, 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 riding in my RV, my RV, wherever I want to be, because I'm free in my RV. We're going to West Virginia. That's the plan. What a beautiful day. We're still in Ohio, in the Hocking Hills area, and don't be fooled by the partly cloudy skies. We've got a cold front coming, so it is bound to get much wetter and colder in the next few days. As it happens in these parts at the beginning of fall. It is September 28th as we begin wrapping up the summer 2020 season. Even with my short trailer, sometimes getting in and out of gas stations can be a little bit of a challenge, especially at small towns where sometimes you don't get the larger travel centers. But I was running low, and you know that range estimate you get in modern cars? It's not always accurate. Another advantage of being short? You can make U-turns almost anywhere. We must be in Amish country again. It is very pretty around here. I'd love to return someday. see a bridge, and that's none other than the Silver Memorial Bridge spanning the Ohio River. And you know what's on the other side? Welcome to West Virginia. We've been here before, first with the rented RV back in 2011, and then in 2019 we visited Harper's Ferry, which happens to be the lowest point in the nation's most mountainous state, so it almost doesn't count, right? Well, this time around we are going to explore the area around the New River Gorge. But first, we're gonna stop by the state capital. For today, the plan is to stay here in St. Albans. There's supposed to be this free campground right on the Kanoa River, and that's plan A. Plan B is a nearby Mardi Gras casino, and plan C… well, Walmarts around here seem to be RV friendly. Here we are, officially Roadside Park, Port of St. Albans. Camping regulations? Two nights only and only RVs and pull-behind campers, no tents or other vehicles. I guess they want you to be self-contained and check it out! It is our lucky day! You're not gonna believe this! This place is absolutely free! Right here on the river, we're about not even half an hour away from, from Charleston, the state capital. We have electric, here we have a, a, a Kroger supermarket across the street, which uh, I might go get some supplies later. And uh, this is amazing. It's probably not going to be necessarily the quietest campsite ever, but it is free and convenient. I'll take it. Thank you, St. Albans, for providing this. Let me fly back real quick here because I got a surprise visit. A very nice couple, viewers of the channel.
Oh, good morning. Late morning, really. Um, you know, I've been catching up on some work. It rained most of the night. And we may still get a little bit more rain today, but... This was a great spot here. Right next to, to the river here. All right, today the plan is to go to Fayetteville, um, which is about two hours away. I already reserved at this campground called Reef Rafters. But along the way, Charleston, not Charleston, South Carolina, it's Charleston, West Virginia, the capital. And it is kind of a theme, right? Uh, we're gonna stop by the Capitol building, take a picture maybe. It's getting colder and the furnace last night, it failed to, uh, to ignite a couple of times. I emailed Adam, I'm sure they'll take care of it and uh, here to the left, I forgot to show you, that's Chuck Yeager's rocket. Yes, Chuck Yeager, the West Virginia native who broke the sound barrier. It is a good 20 minutes to the state's capital, and uh, here we are. If you noticed, I got every single red light. Let's try and find parking. There's a lucky person with a Class C who found parking, but I'll find mine. I mean, there's gotta be two adjacent parallel parking spots somewhere near the capital, right? Meanwhile, we are exploring this neighborhood, and so far, Charleston, pretty good-looking town. I think I'll park right here. Pretty cool houses here. We're just a couple of blocks away and it's a nice walk here by the Kanawha River. That's where I parked. Spaces are a little narrow, but it'll work. It is just for a couple of minutes. Well, one of the main features of this Capitol building, it's its beautiful golden cupola. Yeah. Timing is everything, right? It's my lucky day. They seem to be undergoing some renovation. I'm still gonna walk. I'm still gonna walk uh, towards the, the front of the building and see it, but looks like we're gonna have to come back at some point. Just a little bit noisy here, but luckily I can edit that out. As I was saying, the main feature here is the state's capital dome, apparently the largest in the country, gilded with 23 karat gold leaf. There's also a statue of Lincoln, famous statue called Lincoln Walks at Midnight. So that's some prime real estate there across the river. Well, there it is. I'm sure by the time they finish, it's gonna be beautiful, gorgeous. We'll be back. Most of these houses here by the river, very nice. And you know they all have a view of the Capitol building. Thank you. 
This, by the way, I just found out is the governor's mansion. And there is the sign right there. It is a beautiful house. Parked nearby the governor's mansion, it's my own mansion on wheels, Minitini 2. The GPS wanted me to make a U-turn, but I decided to make three rights and a left. And I'm gonna see if we can avoid the interstate, which is a toll road, and we're gonna take US 60 all the way. It is only about an hour drive to Fayetteville, so we will not be in much of a hurry. And I doubt we're gonna be able to do much today, since it is supposed to rain all afternoon and all night, really, but there's always tomorrow. Very cool to see the mountains and the low-hanging clouds. You know I love mountains. It is definitely a welcome change of scenery. Now arriving at Glen Ferris and what you saw to the right, that was Kanawha Falls. We'll be back tomorrow without the trailer. And here to the right, the famous Glen Ferris Inn. It started raining pretty hard again. And here we are, Reef Rafters Campground in Fayetteville, West Virginia. We're going to be here for two nights. KUA, they make you follow a yellow golf cart. Here, they just walk you to your campsite. All right, Riff Rafters uh, campground here. Seems pretty good. Seems pretty good. The, the lady that runs it, uh, she was very nice. And uh, this is kind of a strange site because it is like a pull inside and then I guess I could I could live with the truck through here but then when I leave the day after tomorrow I just back it out and I'm out it's nice if the weather improves we're gonna do something today otherwise I'm just gonna you know read up on my southern West Virginia book here and uh, get some work done and see if I can figure out what's wrong with the, with the furnace. It, it, it ignites one out of five times or so. So I have to figure it out. Because tonight is gonna get cold. Yeah, the campground is nice, but the weather? The weather doesn't wanna cooperate now, does it? So I'm just gonna walk around the campground a little bit and tomorrow we'll explore. They have this playground here and most of the stuff you would expect from a small family-owned campground. Basic, but very nice. I'm gonna get some work done and we'll continue tomorrow. For the In garbage. 600 feet, merge onto Laurel Creek Road. The garbage dumpster. She said it was by the exit, but... There it is, okay. Besides taking care of the garbage, I also went to a nearby hardware store to get some propane. And now we are ready to start enjoying our day. Let's go see the main attraction here, which is the new River Gorge. By the way, this has been upgraded to national park status since our visit here. 
New River Gorge National River, and this is managed by the or owned by the National Park Service. So it is probably safe to assume that they're not gonna let me fly this drone here. <laughs> I forgot to bring it anyways. But. Maybe I should look at that trail map. I just got a trail map from the information booth there. Okay, here we have commanding views of the bridge. Hmm, maybe not as commanding. It looks like the better views are farther down, but this one is not bad actually. information about the bridge 3030 feet almost a kilometer long hmm, lower overlook there's uh, 178 steps let's do it There it is, the New River, which is a popular seasonal place for whitewater rafting and other activities. So beautiful out here, so green and lush, yet we're getting hints that autumn is inevitably coming. Oh yeah, the views from down here are going to be so much better. That's the old bridge down there, the old Fayette Station Road going across the New River Gorge, which was the only way to cross until 1977 when the new bridge was built. It used to take 40 minutes driving down a narrow mountain road and that bridge, and in a few minutes we're going to take that old road just for fun, but on the new bridge it takes less than a minute to drive across the gorge. It is the longest steel span in the Western Hemisphere and the third highest in the United States. Well, that was really cool. Beautiful views. I just uh, did a Pelican head update. Hopefully it will upload. But look at these trees. Man, in about two weeks, this is going to be peaking and uh, I'm going to miss it. I'm really kind of ready to go home. So tomorrow we continue south. And um, I almost made a big mistake and reserved the campground called uh, Down by the River. They have one of those draconian rules where they don't allow you to use your, your, your Wi-Fi hotspot. I'm glad I read the rules before I made the reservation. Instead, I'm staying at a primitive campground. The name escapes me right now, but it's part of the National Park Service. This is by, um, by Grandfather Mountain in North Carolina. Ooh. Stairs. <sighs> All right, let's see what they have this way, and then we'll go someplace else. Here's another view of this spectacular engineering marvel. Yeah, I love to see these old pictures of bridges in construction and uh, under construction. And that's a cool picture from October 1977. So this is not that old in the grand scheme of things. Yeah, yeah, that's pretty high. All right, even though I forgot to bring my hiking shoes, Let's do the, the bridge walk trail. It's not supposed to be bad. It's uh, supposed to be 0 0.86 uh, miles. Moderate to strenuous. This occasionally steep and rocky trail offers views of the gorge and the New River Gorge Bridge. The trail passes under the bridge and connects to the Fayetteville uh, Trail. Sounds like fun. I just uh, wish I had brought my hiking shoes because 
it's easier with them. Although, you know, these Nikes are like on their last leg, so. I guess, I, I guess this is the, the steep part they were referring to. There is a no trespassing sign, so I guess this is as far as we can go. But it is another nice view from a different angle. I guess, I guess it is closed. I'm not gonna trespass, I'm just gonna... I'm just gonna get a little closer, that's all. I wanna see the catwalk that goes under the bridge. That's gonna be a fun thing to do, but I don't think it's, uh, it's available today, so... Yeah, I guess it'll have to be another time. I'm just, I'm just gonna head back, I don't wanna get into trouble. Okay, what we're gonna do, we're gonna take the old road that people had to take before the, the bridge uh, was open. It is a narrow, windy road. Oversized vehicles not recommended. There are two railroad tracks, one on each side of the river, and here's the old bridge. I was hoping to be able to park, to walk the bridge, take some pictures, but maybe on the other side. It is a one-way road these days. This would have been a good spot, but it says no parking anytime, so let's continue. This is it. So check this place out. We've got rapids. What a spectacular place uh, this is. I actually heard about it uh, first on the Amateur Traveler podcast, so uh, let's see if we can get closer to the rapids here. Maybe there's an easier way from over there, I don't know. Yeah, if you haven't noticed, fording creeks is definitely not my specialty. Maybe if I get on my hands and knees. Should I? Should I not? Should I? Should I not? I just don't want to get wet, you know? Yeah. Made it. Like a champ. Like a pro. Everybody taking pictures on that rock over there. I'll call it Instagram rock. One of these days, mark my words, one of these days, I'm gonna try whitewater rafting. I'll start easy, but it seems like so much fun, right? And there's the view to the other side. Instagram rock. What a cool place this is. We have 
perfect spot here. We get a nice view of the of the bridge and this the rapids here and uh, very cool. Now let's now let's see if I can make my way back across uh, across the creek here. The kids seem to be having no problem at all whatsoever. I, on the other hand, so that's how it's done. I did it, I did it once again, although my right shoe got really, really wet. <laughs> uh, well, let's, uh, let's continue. I might go back to the campground, change my shoes, and then we'll go to Glens Ferry or, or that other state park. There's two state parks around here that are supposed to be really cool. So let's walk across this uh, narrow bridge here, see if there's a better view from this side. And there's the creek, Wolf Creek, apparently. Here's looking upstream under the railroad trestle. Okay, this is the boat ramp because this uh, place is very popular with uh, white water rafting. Way up there, you can see the bridge. Yeah, the cameras certainly can't convey the sheer enormousness. Let's go check out the old Fayette Station Bridge. There's my Instagram rock. I wouldn't do that. Seems dangerous. I'm telling you, some people really go out of their way to get that perfect shot. Hey, if you're a good swimmer, maybe. I don't know how hard it would be to swim in those rapids. I don't know. I might be getting old, but I still think the perfect shot is from here. Sometimes the perfect shot doesn't even need to have the bridge in it. Like here, looking upstream. Very calm and relaxing, with the leaves quietly falling on the stream. Well, yeah, that's the, the iconic view of the new River Gorge uh, bridge there and the, the new river. All right, let's go someplace else. It's another windy road going back up. The guest at the Amateur Traveler podcast recommended this pizzeria called Pies and Pines. And since I like both, I decided to give him a try. This place seems to be only for takeout uh, and uh, delivery, so... So much for that. Yeah, West Virginia is a lot more closed down than, uh, than I was expecting, actually. I was really looking forward to the sit-down experience with an ice-cold IPA, but hey, at least I get to see downtown Fayetteville a little bit. And now, 
I'm just gonna have a quick lunch in Minitini and continue. Next up, Babcock State Park. This is one of West Virginia's most iconic locations, particularly the Glade Creek Grist Mill. Let's park. This is Glade Creek. The park has a campground, so I'm thinking this might be a great place to camp at. Something to add to the list, for sure, for future reference. And I'm obviously burying the lead here, which is the grist mill. We can see it in the background there. Make your memory here. Don't be fooled by its apparent authenticity. This mill was built in 1976 as a recreation of a previous one that once ground grain here on Glade Creek, long before Babcock became a state park. It was, however, created by combining parts and pieces from three mills, which once dotted the state. So the materials are authentic, just not the exact location. It is nonetheless one of the most photographed spots in the whole state and practically a symbol of West Virginia nowadays. It is also fully functional, so from time to time you are able to purchase freshly ground cornmeal. Had I come earlier, I could have flown the drone. Yes, who would have thought, apparently drones are allowed from 1 to 3 p.m. Let's get closer. And if it wasn't for the 1976 sign, I would have thought this was a whole ancient grist mill. Let me tell you something, if this thing had water flowing, it would really be a thing to see, you know? Nah, it is closed. All right, let's do this and maybe we can do like the, the island in the sky trail or something like that. By the way, I just met, I just met some, uh, some viewers from the area here and uh, they recognized me and uh, it's always, it's always cool to meet people on the road. I'm gonna do the island in the sky trail here, high cliff area. It's supposed to be, it's supposed to be a little bit strenuous. It's about half a mile, um, you know, up and up and up the whole way. But this doesn't seem too rocky or anything like that. So I, I, I forgot my, my hiking shoes again. Right, I'll let you know if there's uh, something interesting along the way. that what geological phenomenon could have caused that huh Extraordinary. <laughs> well. What 
is this? What is this place? <sighs> this looks like the top. Oh, here we go. We made it to the top. Yeah, I think this is it. All right, I think I'm gonna go back down because, um, by the way, that view over there, uh, I imagine in two or three weeks is gonna be spectacular. I'm also, I almost feel like lingering a little bit in this area to, 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 to witness the changing of the, the colors, you know, the turning of the leaves. But I do want to get back home. It's been a long trip. The rest of the trail just goes to a different trailhead by a switchback on the road. And I think I'm just going to go down the same way I came. All right. Back down the way we came. This trail has like almost like a mysterious otherworldly feel to it. It's, the, the ground is damp and you, you have all these um, yellow uh, leaves that kind of add to like the color scheme. You get the browns, it's the, 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 trees are, are, are the trees are still uh, green, the yellows, and then all these moss here on these rocks. Babcock State Park, by the way, it's a pretty big place with lots to see, miles of trails, uh, but there's only one more thing I want to see before we continue, and that's Bowley Lake. And here we are. Here we go. Bowley Lake, named after Jennings Bowley. Apparently in season they have boat rentals and all kinds of recreational activities, but I kind of like the stillness of a quiet day like this. Such a relaxing place. I imagine probably not on a summer weekend, but today it's just perfect. I was very tempted to do the, the trail around the lake, but there's only so much beauty your brain can process in one day. And I'm afraid that where we're going next, there's even gonna be more, so. Pleasantly surprised by West Virginia. Okay, let's go someplace else. Why am I going through these narrow roads, you might ask? Well, I've been looking for that road we took by mistake back in 2011, when we selected avoid tolls on the GPS and we got on this super sketchy road. 
It was my first time driving an RV too, so the experience is engraved in my mind. I mean, it was certainly something like this, at least this narrow, but I don't think this is it. I just wanted to replicate the experience without the burden of a 25-foot class C. In any case, on to our next destination, which is another state park on the New River Gorge. Well, here we are. This is Hawk's Nest State Park. Comes highly recommended. Oh well, yeah. Some renovations are happening here for sure, but yeah, that looks the the, the view looks promising. Look at that. Oh, this is like a tramway. Okay, I see. That would have been a cool ride. Oh, look at that. Turns out today is Wednesday. Closed for maintenance. Let's, let's do the trail. Spectacular view. I like it when state parks really sell, you know, upsell their, their features. <laughs> Spectacular view, look at that. Yeah, 100 extra steps at this point in the day is nothing. And this seems to be that spectacular view advertised earlier. And it is nice. I like it. That's Hawk's Nest Dam down there. Mm, bummer. All right, yeah, this was definitely worth uh, the hundred steps that I have to go up now. <laughs> Beautiful views here. I guess this whole lodge is under renovations right now. Alright, one more thing and then we can go home. I'm like, you know, checking off things off the list. And at this time of the day, that's all we really have time for. Remember yesterday when we came and passed by Glen Ferries, Kanoa Falls? Well, I wanted to stop for a bit, so that's what we're doing here to end our day. This is the Kanawha Falls public fishing area. Let's check them out. There it is. And this is actually just a small section. The falls aren't very high, only 15 feet, but as you can see, very, very wide. Pretty much the width of the river. There, that's the other part over there. Let's get closer to the power plant, which was built in 1899 and still to this day looks very similar to that original plant, still producing renewable energy. It would be cool to do some whitewater kayaking here, but I don't know. In conclusion, this was a very nice last stop here in the mountain state. We'll be back one of these days, but now it is time to continue. The road ahead beckons, and as I've said, I've been on the road for almost three months, the longest I've been nomadic, and uh, it would be good to stay static for a little bit. Actually, I forgot, there's one more thing to do. There's a brewery in Fayetteville that is supposed to be really nice. This is it. It is called Bridge Brew Works. After a long day, 
nothing like a nice refreshing IPA. And they even have a food truck on site. Mountain Mama's Craft Food, so I'm gonna have a catfish sandwich and call it a night. Alright, good morning. Let's see if we can get this uh, furnace issue solved and then we'll get back to traveling. Something you don't see every day. They have kerosene. Hmm, interesting. So, as per Winnebago's recommendation, I've been in touch with Kenny of All Seasons RV Service, and he called me this morning saying that he was available. So I'm gonna meet up with him now. Kenny here is gonna take care of us. Kenny, what's your YouTube channel? All Seasons Mobile RV Service. Since this was filmed, he's rebranded his channel as Hillbilly RV. A much better name, I think. And uh, he does all kinds of RV repairs and upgrades, so check him out. By the way, what's wrong with my furnace seems to be something called a sail switch. This is the sales switch. And keep on traveling. All right, see you on the road. By the way, even though Kenny did not have the exact replacement part we needed, he even called the medic to find out. Whatever he did, somehow worked. Maybe the old sail switch was just a little stuck and needed some jiggling because after six months, the furnace is still working perfectly, as it did throughout the rest of the fall and winter of 2020. So thank you, Kenny, till we meet again. Now the adventure continues as the road will take us to Virginia, North Carolina, Tennessee, Georgia, and eventually Florida. But more about that on the next and possibly final episode of the summer 2020 season. Until then, thank you so much for watching and see you on the road. Riding, riding in